Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2, where, as you can plainly see, Art Kirsch, my business partner in crime and Celebrating Act 2, is with our favorite gourmand, the publisher of the virtual gourmet newsletter, free, by the way, and a wonderful read weekly, John Mariani, Mariani, a nice Italian boy. And the price has not gone up on that free losing letter. Just go to johnmariani.com and you can subscribe free. Okay. Uh, John, um, question for you. All, all three of us uh, grew up in New York. Well, maybe we didn't grow up, but we, we aged from a young age to where we are now uh, uh, with New York in our background. And you've written uh, dozens of books and articles on Italian food. Uh, you, I mean, among all the things that you know really well, Italian food is one of the ones that you know really, really well. And um, are there, can you um, maybe talk about some of the really highlights of great moments in Italian food that um, uh, will help coalesce all that? Because we all love Italian food. Yeah, um, it, all food, I guess, goes back to uh, paleological times. But by the time the Romans really got going, because of the emperors demanded the very best food, uh, sometimes in gargantuan amounts and had orgies in which people would throw up and then come back and eat some more. Uh, um, so the first, back in the first century, the first known cookbook ever was uh, published uh, called Apicius, and it was about cooking. And it was written for the slaves and the cooks who worked in the great houses of these uh, Roman emperors. Um, uh, to, to tell you how extraordinary and uh, gluttonous they were in the third century, there was this party animal named the Emperor Heliogabus, and he used to have monthly orgies at the dinner party, which he served with things like 600 ostriches, and reportedly even uh, the meat of Christians whom they got away from the lions in the Colosseum. Uh, yeah. Awful guy. Um, and then they had sex all night. <laughs> But let's skip forward to something more pleasant. So, uh, and to dispel a myth, <clears throat> 1295, Marco Polo gets back from China after many years there, and he comes back and he reports, <clears throat> not, hey, they have these stuff I want to call noodles, and we got to bring them here and make them in Italy, bologna. What he said was, hey, they have noodles just like we have in Italy. Okay, so that's the end of that myth. <laughs> um, early 14th century, the table fork makes this mark, but because it was an Arab uh, invention, the table fork, the popes said that this is a heathen, this is a heathen instrument, so you cannot use it if you're a Christian. <clears throat> but it replaced the uh, eating just with a, a knife, which was not very good to do. Um, 1492, uh, Columbus discovers America, or what uh, we call the New World. And while the Europeans and the Spaniards and the English and the French put all sorts of goodies to <clears throat> the Americas, including mammals like pigs and chickens and uh, beef, cattle, and all of those things, what Columbus brought back in what we call, call the Columbus Exchange, Columbian Exchange, <clears throat> is everything from turkeys and strawberries to corn to tomatoes and potatoes. Imagine European cuisine, imagine Italian cuisine without tomatoes. Well, mm. he brought them back, uh, he didn't bring them back specifically, um, but with the guys that followed him very early on in the 15th century, in the 16th century, um, these things were being planted in Europe. Wow, I can't believe, what a concept, <laughs> Italian food without tomatoes, I have to tell you. Are, are there any other um, vegetables, other foods that influenced Italian cooking like that? Yeah. How about corn for polenta? How about chili peppers? Think of this. India, China did not have, uh, Indonesia, the whole South, no chili peppers. You know, you go and you go to a restaurant and you go, oh, I want lamb vindaloo. Make it really hot. Ha! Before Columbus, before the Portuguese actually brought brought chili peppers to uh, Asia, they ain't got no chili peppers over there. Wow, wow. So uh, this I'll is 
let's take let's take another uh, something that I can understand, uh, like uh, pizza. Um, pizza <laughs> we consider to be an Italian dish, and uh, certainly there's great uh, pizzas in Italy. But what is really the origin of uh, pizza as we know it today? Well, that was another great moment. Um, the origins of pizza are in Naples. And they were just flatbreads. Now, all over the Mediterranean, they had flatbreads. But they started in Naples to add various ingredients as a snack food. They call it pizza, which is from the word pizzicata, which means to pluck something, either pick it up and eat it or to pluck it out of the oven. So they put various ingredients on it. They fold it into a libretto, a little book like we do here, slices, and they ate it. Well, big deal happens. 1881. Now Italy is actually a nation. And being a nation, um, the uh, queen consort of Victor Emmanuel II was visiting Naples, and the pizza makers, pizzaioli of Naples, decided to have a contest uh, to make a pizza in honor of her arrival. Um, so a guy whose name was, um, uh, what was his name, uh, Pizzaiolo there, um, what's his name? Well, it doesn't matter. But anyway, he makes a pizza with white mozzarella, green basil, and uh, red tomatoes. Raffaello Esposito, that was his name. And he made it and supposedly served it to the queen, whether or not he did. He made it in the colors of the new Italian flag, which is red, white, and green. And that kind of took off as kind of a chic dish at that time. <clears throat> so pizza alla margarita started being served all, all across Naples. And that's the origin of what we know as the mainstay pizza, which was later brought to America. Um, uh, 1906 was the first pizzeria to open in America in, uh, in uh, Spring Street in Soho, or Little Italy, more or less, in New York City, and fanned out from there because the pizza as itself was unknown out of Naples, outside of Naples, until well into the 20th century, before it was known better here. Hmm. So that, the market is more a marketing thing that uh, some people believe pizza was American and somehow got transported back to Italy, but really it's the other way around. It, it, right. it is an Italian creation. It's a Neapolitan creation, yeah. Hmm. Now yeah. you cannot go to any restaurant in Italy that does not serve pizza. Anymore, uh, interesting. <laughs> Interesting uh, 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 chronological tour uh, through history. I can't believe that Italian food goes back to the Roman Empire, but uh, obviously it does. They were they owned the world at one point. Whatever they did, whatever they ate, went around the world. Well, also what they brought in, because they were an empire, Caesar's troops went to Germany and France and even to England and Spain, and they brought back foods from those countries. So yeah. they had a lot more, and, and for the Mediterranean too. I mean, the, the fact this guy had 600 uh, ostriches served, he wasn't getting ostriches in Italy, he was, he was importing them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the most modern um, uh, landmark or uh, uh, chronological update or whatever we call this for, for um, uh, development of Italian food. Is I it the pizza? This, well, no, the pizza was very, very important in that everybody in America loves pizza. And everybody after World War II had Italian restaurants everywhere. Um, I would say that one of the things that changed uh, everything radically were the movies made in Italy by American filmmakers such as, um, you, you know, Roman Holiday, Three Coins in the Fountain, Summertime. This was post-war Italy, which had been wrecked in the war. I mean, really demolished these cities uh, by both the Germans and, and, and the Allies. Rome was intact. Rome was never really much bombed. Uh, but they sprang back very, very quickly. But if you look at those movies in the 1950s with Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn and uh, and um, uh, Rosano Brazzi rom romancing every Italian woman who came to uh, came to the city, like Catherine Hepburn in Summertime. And Americans are seeing this wonderful, beautiful cities, and they were always eating this great food and terrific wine. They sit in this little trattoria and they play, so much so that Lady and the Tramp, everybody knows the scene in Lady and the Tramp. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there, there's a red checkered tablecloth, the Chianti bottle, 
big panel in it, a big fat book comes out to night is a night and they call it Bella Notte. Um, so those movies had a great effect, followed by Arthur Fromer's Europe on five dollars a day. And it really was true. I did it. I oh, we got a lot of sun here. You want me to turn that, that down on my sun, sunshine there? Let me just do that. Okay. okay. Um, Arthur Fromer's five dollars a day at Europe. You could do. I mean, the, the the almighty dollar was so strong, and so hundreds of thousands of Americans, including a lot of college students, man, got on these charter flights and went to London and Paris and Rome and were eating for. 50, 60 cents a day. I mean, you could really do it. This, the 747s, the 707s, the original Boeing 707s, were the ones who carried Americans to Italy. And uh, everybody came back raving, hey, that food over there is nothing like the Italian food we get here. That was, to me, a very signal moment. Very, very important moment. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, hopefully we'll be getting back to a lot of travel a lot faster than... I am we have in the last couple of years. Yeah, I'm dying to. But the, it, but irrespective of any of that, because of all the wonderful moments in Italian food uh, development and uh, appreciation for uh, Italian life and travel and therefore getting to know their food, um, this has been a great trip because who knew who knew that noodles were already in in Italy? Okay, so they really they really knew about pasta before uh, uh, the importation of noodles. They did, and they knew, they knew pasta all over the Mediterranean also at that yeah. time. Yeah. John, it's a terrific, a little bit of history, a uh, lot of mouth-watering descriptions, and uh, just a fun conversation. Thank you so much. So let's all go out and have a slice. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.